Apple sponsored by Brilliant. Ah, where are, where am I? What is that? Is that all? Ah! Gentlemen, definitely not ladies. Welcome again. Today you are going to witness my pathetic, poor attempt to make not a triple but a triple A multiplayer game from the ground up with no game engine. I'm already regretting this. Anyway, let us begin. For this project, I decided to go again with Rust. If you don't know what that is, it's just a multi-diagram, general purpose, strictly typed, and most importantly, amazingly fast, made by a bunch of liberals used by Jarak Obama himself. For startup, I went with the usual. Download random stuff off the internet, create a bunch of files, write some code, compile it, make a window, and get a nice spinning box. Write even more code, more files, some assets, make a player debug, controller, read boring steal some code, and start all over again. If you have been around here since months ago, you probably know about this. A little game I made, which I'm not proud of, where I use this thing called Piston. They also plan to use for the multiplayer game I had as an idea, but it's, um... So, I switched to Raylib, a game development library that has many built-in features and plenty. Plenty of examples. So, I created a window, drew a box, and started to work on the actual game. The idea is simple. I wanted to make an endless top-down 2D shooter deathmatch game, get a bunch of dudes, or like, boxes, and give them weapons. I immediately started looking for a networking library because it was my biggest fear during this project. But, what is networking? To put it simply, this is a network, a bunch of things connected to each other, communicating and sharing resources. Connect two or more computers and you will get... These computers send messages in form of zeros and ones, including the video you're watching right now and the subscribe button you didn't click. Every multiplayer game follows either architecture, peer-to-peer. -peer. Player A moves, tells everyone else he moved, so all can see him moving. Player B gets a giant glowing endgame weapon that he shouldn't have gotten at this point of the game. Everyone else goes, yeah, yeah well, good. Yeah, anyway. Cheap, not scalable, insecure, and too complex. Server client. You have a governor computer that is called a server and clients connected to it. The server can handle many things that you want to sync between players. World state, enemies, players positions, projectiles. <laughs> oh no. Usually it goes like this. You shoot, tell the server that you did, the server tells everyone else so they can see you shooting. Do some calculations simultaneously and determine if you did hit the target or not. If you did, the server will inform everyone else that <laughs> ain't cheap, scalable, much more secure, simpler. Ish. For communication, games tend to use different protocols and technologies. How does he know all this stuff, right? And he is only 18. You would know. You would. Do you want to learn computer science, programming, physics, even more science, and math? Yes, you want. Ever tired of reading big, giant, croc solid boring books? Yes, you are. Sick of that Indian guy ringing inside your skull? Do I need to tell you? Hell yes, you are! Radio. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and programming interactively. Game development and programming in general require to learn many complex topics. But look no further, since Brilliant covers every topic you need from basic to advanced levels. It doesn't matter if you have a negative IQ or a big brain. Brilliant will help you grow and expand your knowledge, as they use a lot of visualization so you can understand problems better and faster. It is a fully interactive experience so you get to learn by doing, not just watching. Make sure you go to the link down below to get a free month and a 20% off your first premium plan. Having all that said, I needed to find a good networking library to use, and it didn't take me that long to find this one called Renet, that seemed dope and easy to work with. Noise. I started exploring the library to get an idea how it works. I exactly followed its instructions and started testing. I was expecting something to print here, but... I got nothing. I checked the code, wrote some, and gave it another try. Still... Nothing. The agony began. Maybe... um. Nope, nothing. I thought the problem was from my system, so I went to Windows, and to my surprise, everything was that silence. I want to take 15 minute break, came back, and gave it another try, but this time, it kind of worked. 
Let's freaking go! Having that out of my way, I had a chance to work on something else. So I quickly wired the map loader, changed my project structure, and I wanted to test the assets loader I wrote. It basically checks for the sprites if they are in place and load them to memory, and any component in my game should be able to use them. But that didn't work quite well. Read more docs, give it another try, and... I create a whole new project to clear my head and to help me spot the mistake I made, which was... None. Yes, because I literally went back to the original project, tried it out out of curiosity without changing a single line of code, and... It worked. Later on I was trying to figure out a way to send the map to the client and load it. Thankfully, that was pretty easy to do, since the library is very simple to work with. The map is just a text that the client turns into tiles. The only problem I had was how to turn this to that. Web servers or the website you're watching me on right now uses this, JSON. But the problem with it, it's, it's quite big. Re big messages require more bandwidth and more processing power, which would result in high latency. But after doing some research, I found this. It serializes data in binary format, which makes it smaller and faster. Now that I have walls, I can start working on collisions. So I did. Luckily, the library I was using had a built-in rectangles intersection check-in, which saved me some time. Some time. I don't know what was happening here, but I think I was colliding with some solid air. But after a few hours, I got it working. Just as I did with the map, I had the server spawning the player in a random position once he joins, and tell everyone else that he did. That was easy, so I got it in the first try. No cap. With all the hype I had, I wanted to sync the player's position, to get an actual prototype of a multiplayer. And that... Uh, that... um... yeah. After a whole night of debugging, I realized I was sending the player position through the wrong communication channel. Now that you know I'm stupid, let's talk how I overcomplicate problems. In a top-down shooter, your player always aims where the mouse is at, but that was just another agony. My brain was getting fried, so I had to pause things for a little, take a piece of paper and a pencil do some trigonometry, deal with the rotation matrices, and go back to the desk and actually fix it. I also optimized the collisions a bit by checking the tiles that are only next to the player instead of checking all the surroundings. Very good. A game with guns is not a game without an actual shooting. So... Yeah, it's bad. For now. What was important to work on was the hit registration, but I was suffering from what is known as analysis paralysis, which is, um, thinking just thinking, nothing else but thinking. After reading some articles, I just decided to do what I did with the walls, but on the server side. I also broke something that made the bullets, um, not... Now when you shoot, the server does some math to decide whether you hit something or not. I tried syncing the player's pew-pews and that got me very interesting results in the beginning, but in the end, I got it working. Wait, why, why is he not dying? Even my code editor was racist towards me and was constantly freezing every time I opened the project. And to add insult to injury, my Linux system went... bitch black. Regardless, I switched to Windows and continued working on the game. Got the kill... I mean, eliminating other players working, a broken economy system that rewards you when you die, and a reloading mechanism that doesn't work. I also assembled a quick UI that lets you see what weapons you have, what weapons you don't, and what weapons you can buy. Olive oil to heal yourself, and ammunition. At that point, I had one little thing left to do. The thing that makes America, America. Guns. Well, the first one was this cult kind of looking thing. The one from Fortnite. <laughs> that was a little tricky to implement. A and an AKA 69. Look, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thank you. But I'm sorry if you didn't get a game to play in this video, cause this thing is unplayable and a little broken. I mean, let's look to the bright side. You learned a thing or two, didn't you? No? Well, here is a puzzle. Try to solve it and goodbye.